Well, what an absolute joy to be at New City Church. Uh, by the way, National Community Church, NCC, New City Church, NCC. So I feel right at home. And, uh, you know, being from Chicago, so many uh, friends and family, uh, even a few teachers I had. And uh, I'm going to get in trouble if I start naming names, but a joy. Uh, to be back home, and seriously, the, the uh, snow was like, all right, welcome back home. Uh, I remember this well, and so, uh, so good to be with you. I, I want to say this, that a uh, couple of reasons why there's just so much joy in my heart this morning. I, I think one is that, you know, I, I don't think you have to meet Pastor Steve and get to know him for more than about five minutes to know that he's a 10-talent guy. That's what I call him. Just 10 talent people that are so gifted that uh, you're actually a little jealous if, uh, if you're being honest. But uh, you know what I love and respect about Pastor Steve and Jesse is that, you know, listen, you never want your gifts to take you further than your character can support you. And um, their hearts for the Lord and for the kingdom just impacts me. And so it's such a joy and privilege to be a little piece of this puzzle. And I feel like we ought to honor Pastor Steve and Jesse. Can we do that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to say a couple of other reasons why it's so fun to be here. Uh, one is that we met in a school in our early, our first year. Uh, but it was not a school like this. By the way, last time I was here, it was playing basketball for Naperville Central against uh, Glenbard South. Um, and uh, I think I had a decent game, so I feel pretty good today. Um, but uh, we were in D.C., and we were meeting in a D.C. public school, but it was a cafetorium. And uh, in the month of August, there was no air conditioning in D.C., it's a miracle our church still exists, um, but uh, fun to kind of be back in this church plant stage and phase, a lot of memories. And then uh, when I graduated uh, from uh, college, went to the University of Chicago, and then went off to a little Bible college, and then landed back in the Chicago area, thought we'd be here forever. I was uh, up at Trinity doing a, a master's program. And uh, I'm 22 years old, and it's amazing how much you know when you're 22. <laughs> Have it all figured out. And so I uh, put together a 25-year plan for a church plant in the, in the Chicagoland area, and we got about 9 or 12 months into it, and that church plant failed. And uh, I'll tell you two things, learn two things. One, unless the Lord builds a house, they who labor, labor in vain. It's got to be a God thing. And this is a God thing. And, uh, and then the second thing is I think the cure for the fear of failure is not success. I think it's failure in small enough doses that you build up an immunity to it. And uh, you fall on your face once or twice and then you discover that God loves you just as much. He's ready to kind of pick you back up, dust you off, and give you a second chance. So that is what then uh, inspired my wife and I. We, we were then ready to go anywhere. In fact, Lord, the further away from here, the better. Um, it was a little embarrassing. But uh, God then moved us to D.C., and we've had the joy of planting and pastoring a church in the nation's capital. We live uh, right on Capitol Hill and uh, raised our family there. It's been a joy to see what the Lord has done. But here's what's special about being back. I I'm living vicariously through New City Church because it's something that we weren't able to do. Did you hear me? And so this is extra special because to know that God is beginning a good work, he's going to carry it to completion, and to be a little shareholder in that is pretty unique. And so ah, it's a joy. Well, I want to bring a word this morning that I think is a timely word for this church. I uh, hope it's a word of encouragement. hope you walk out today uh, with that faith dial turned up just a little bit. And so if you have a Bible, you can turn over to Matthew chapter 13, and we will get there in just a moment. And uh, it's so good to see these faces. It's so hard for me not to call out friends and family, but... Uh, uh, so good to be together. In 1983, 
Lauren Whitehead published an article in the American Journal of Physics titled Domino Chain Reaction. Now, the domino effect, nothing new. Uh, and you can envision, you knock over a domino, knocks over another domino. But what Whitehead found uh, was rather unique. That a domino was capable of knocking over another domino that was one and a half times its size. In other words, two inch domino can knock over a three inch domino. Three inch domino can knock over a four and a half inch domino. You get the point. By the time you get to the 18th domino, you could knock over the leaning tower of Pisa. Of course, it's leaning, so that's not entirely fair. By the 21st domino, you could take down the Washington Monument in our backyard, 555 feet tall. Uh, the 23rd domino would uh, croissant the Eiffel Tower, 984 feet uh, tall. 24th domino, take down the Empire State Building. 25th domino, uh, the Burj Khalifa, more than half a mile tall, uh, tallest building in the world. In the realm of mathematics, there are two types of progression. There is linear progression and exponential progression. Linear progression is 1 plus 1 equals 2. Exponential progression is compound doubling. So 2 times 2 equals 4. If you take 30 linear steps, you are about 90 feet from where you started. But if you take 30 exponential steps, you have circled the earth 26 times. I want to submit that faith is not linear. Faith is exponential. Every decision we make has a domino effect. Every action we take has a domino effect. And I might say right here that God is doing something in your life and in the life of this church that I believe is bigger than what you can imagine. Do not despise the day of two-inch dominoes. If you are faithful with the little, God is going to bless you with much or I might say it this way, if you do little things like they're big things, God is going to do big things like they're little things. All right, with that as a frame, Matthew chapter 13, and uh, we're going to jump into this passage. Matthew chapter 13, five parables that Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, and this is one of them. Jesus said, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. A mustard seed comes in a few different varieties, uh, black, white, and yellow, and it is only two millimeters in diameter. Uh, so small that if I had one, you wouldn't even be able to see it, yet it grows into a nine-foot tree its first year. Now, that little seed is packed with Vitamin B6, B12, vitamin C, E, and K, as well as calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, iron, and zinc. And it becomes a key ingredient in one of my favorite condiments, mustard. Uh, classic yellow in the house. <laughs> Spicy brown. Gray Poupon. There's always a few. Um, it's hard to imagine going to Portillo's, getting one of those hot dogs, and not putting some mustard on it, right? What would be the point? <laughs> but if you didn't know what that little seed was, you would never guess what it could become. Faith is like that. When you exercise faith, you never know how or when or where God is going to honor that faith in a remarkable way. What I want to do this weekend is talk a little bit about the power of a single seed. 
And I want to make sure that we understand the power of that seed. In 1963, Israeli archaeologists were excavating Herod the Great's palace uh, on Masada. Those archaeologists removed layer after layer of history and they found what archaeologists find, some skeletal remains, some ancient artifacts. But the most curious find was a sealed jar with seeds preserved inside it. Now, radiant carbon dating gave it an age range between 155 B.C. and 64 A.D. So about 2,000 years old, around the time of Christ. And these researchers figured out that these seeds belong to an extinct species of trees called the Judean date palm. Well, those seeds were put in storage for 40 years at Bar Ilan University in Jerusalem in 2005. Three seeds were planted in the Araba desert. Eight weeks later, one of those seeds sprouted the oldest seed to be successfully germinated. And so they named it Methuselah. (laughs) By 2008... That one seed had grown into a five-foot tree with a dozen leaves. It flowered for the first, fi- first time in 2011. And at last measurement in 2015, Methuselah was a 10-foot tall pollen-producing Judean date palm. In the field of botany, two categories of seed, orthodox and unorthodox. An unorthodox seed cannot survive below 10 degrees Celsius. But an orthodox seed, an orthodox seed can survive a glacier, can survive a drought, can survive centuries, even 20 centuries like Methuselah. Faith is an orthodox seed. Think about your life. And the seeds that have been planted in your life. I had a grandfather who prayed for his family. Anybody have praying grandparents? Some of my earliest memories are my grandfather, who was hard of hearing, so he wore a hearing aid, kneeling next to his bed at night, taking off his hearing aid and praying for his family. And he couldn't hear himself, but everybody else in the house could. And so I'm four or five years old and I can hear him praying for me by name. My grandfather died when, he was, when I was six, but his prayers did not die. Can I tell you that there have been moments in my life where God has shown favor or grace or done things that I know I did nothing to deserve. Have you ever been there? where it doesn't really make sense. And it's in some of those moments that the Spirit of God has said, Mark, the prayers of your grandfather are being answered in your life right now. I believe that your life, the blessings that you have experienced, come on, it's because of someone else who planted some seeds of faith. And how many of you believe today that God wants to do something in us and through us? And here's the beautiful thing today. You don't have to do something big. We're talking about two millimeters of faith. But when we do those little things like they're big things, now God begins to do those big things like they're little things. Can I suggest that most of us think That what God does for us is for us. But it's never just for us. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what God does in us, he always does to the third and fourth generation. And so listen, we think right here, right now. But God is thinking nations and generations. And that's what faith sets us up for. All right. Here's what I want to do. I want to zoom in on one part of this parable. Uh, It's a part that really um, could be read right over, but uh, we're going to dial in. It says that it is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree so that, and uh, 
That's what I want to focus on. So that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. In 1936, a sociologist by the name of uh, Robert Merton wrote a paper titled The Unanticipated Consequence of Purposive Action. And in that paper, he said that every decision we make, every action we take, has unintended consequences. And you're familiar with this. Uh, And they are beyond our ability to predict, beyond our ability to control. Now, these unintended consequences come in a couple of varieties. There are uh, unexpected drawbacks, and there are unexpected benefits. Let me just make sure we understand these two things. Now, unexpected drawback would be the medicine that you take that might solve one issue that you're having, but then actually causes complications called side effects over here. Or or this is uh, trying to help the caterpillar out of the cocoon, right? But in doing so, by helping them, you're hurting them because they never produce the strength to be able to have the wings to to fly. But let's let's not focus on unexpected drawbacks, okay? Let's flip that coin, and I want to talk about unexpected benefits because I think this is at the heart of faith and the heart of the kingdom of God. When I was in the eighth grade, uh, our family had moved to Naperville, and we were looking for a church, and so uh, we walked into this church called Calvary Church, and... and, uh, we decided we would start attending that church. And, and in the eighth grade, I didn't know that the pastor had a daughter. <laughs> and in the eighth grade, I didn't care. It really didn't make a difference. I'll tell you what, I cared in the 12th grade. Um, <laughs> because that's when I asked her out. And we've been married for 26 years. <laughs> now, thank you very much. So here's what I'm saying. Calvary Church, grateful. Um, My father-in-law planted that church in 1967, and and I grew up spiritually there. But did I mention that he had a daughter? Okay, because that is the unexpected benefit right there. And, uh, And so isn't it fun to know today? In fact, would you just take a deep breath, and would you let it out? Can I just remind you today that God wants you to get where God wants you to go more than you want to get where God wants you to go. And he is really good at getting us there. Listen, I promise you today, God is ordering your footsteps. God is preparing good works in advance. And he who began a good work is going to carry it to completion. And so what I'm getting at is this. All God has called us to do is plant a seed of faith here and here. And they're two millimeter seeds of faith. And we think to ourselves, what difference does it really make? No, 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 no. Because you know what? God can take that two millimeter seed, turn it into a nine foot tree that we think might produce some mustard to put on our hot dog. But stick with me. What was the purposive action in this story? I don't think it's too complicated. You, you plant a mustard seed because, well, in this instance, you want to put mustard on your kosher hot dog, right? But there's something bigger happening here. Jesus says it becomes a tree. Here we go. So that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. You have no idea how much I love this. This is the furthest thing from this farmer's mind. He's just planting a seed for one reason, but God has ulterior motives. Uh, Can I have a little bit of fun this weekend? Because I'm sort of reliving, uh, it's almost like 23 years are kind of flashing before my eyes as I think about as we got started as a church. And listen, you know, Pastor Steve and Jesse, we, I mean, it really, can I just say, it's, it's, it's remarkable, and this is a testament to God, what God has done in six months. Are you kidding me? I, yes? I mean, we, uh, well, 
took about, about five years for us to grow from 19 people to 250 people, okay? There's nothing glamorous about that. There was nothing easy about it. And uh, by the way, kind of fun, then uh, Washington Post felt like our demographics were newsworthy. We were about 80% single 20-somethings, and they said, we'll do a story. And, and uh, religion editor came over and did the story and said, hey, check out the paper, might make that religion section. So I remember going to church that day, and I was excited because we were five years in kind of doing what we were doing and really not much um, to show for it. And, uh, and so I pick up the, the Sunday paper, and I find the religion section, you know, smallest section in the paper, and I flip through it. I'm so disappointed because we're not in there. And so I fold it back up and put it back on the newsstand because if we're not in there, I'm not going to buy it. You know, buck 25 was not in the church planning budget at that point. And we're on the front page of the Washington Post Sunday edition. Are you kidding me? And I love it when God does things that you can't take credit for. Um, I think God does what God does, yes, because of the gifts that he's given us and because of the way he, in, but come on, God does what God does more often in spite of us. And if we can just stay out of the way, in fact, one of the things we love to say at NCC is if you stay humble and stay hungry, there's nothing that God cannot do in you and through you. And so, you know, I've always believed in long obedience in the same direction. And I saw it modeled for me by someone who devoted his life in something. And, and, uh, and so I've always felt like, God, we're just going gonna to keep planting and see what you do. Can I, can I just say that sometimes I step back on a weekend. I'm like, Lord, look at what you've done. Uh, not, not long ago, I'm walking out of church and I'm, I'm going to come back to New City Church because this isn't about NCC. But I'm walking out of church one weekend and I meet a, a newly elected senator who was there with his family and then catch up with a friend who was experiencing homelessness. We have hundreds of um, friends who are homeless who attend our church. I meet a local news anchor who I recognize from TV, a professor from Georgetown, meet a girl uh, from Kenya who attended NCC when she was an intern in D.C. six years before that. And then a pastor who had gotten a little burned out on ministry. Oh, and then I met a woman who had been trafficked for 19 years. And the daughter she had during that time found a relationship with Christ, invited her mom, and I meet her on a Sunday. And I'm standing there that day. And I'm thinking to myself, how did this happen? Because I'll tell you this, we did not plant that church for that senator. We didn't plant it for this friend who was experiencing homelessness. Didn't, didn't plant it for this girl from Kenya who needed a, a place to continue in a relationship with the Lord while she was in D.C. And, and did not plant it for this woman who had been trafficked for, we didn't do it, I'm not that smart. We didn't do it for any of those reasons. You know what? That's past my pay grade. All we were doing was planting seeds of faith. And what did God do? God said, so that the birds of the, knee, of the air can come and make a nest in your branches. Do you see what I'm saying? And so God brings these people, there's a nest, there's a nest. And because of the faith that New City Church is exercising, it's not about six months. It's about the long game. It's about dreaming big, praying hard, thinking long. And 20 years from now, there are going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of stories a testament to God's grace. Not because we did something great, but because we have a God who takes two millimeters of faith and turns it into a nine-foot tree with a nest where you and 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 you can find a church home. 
But let me say this. I don't think you're here for you. I think God said, hey, here's a nest. But you have friends and you have family and there are people in your life. Guess what? They need a, a, a church home. They need a place where they can come and grow in a relationship with God. Isn't it amazing what God is doing? This is God's kingdom. Jesus did not say, you will build my church. He didn't say, I will build your church. He said, I will build my church, and he's really good at it, isn't he? And so what a joy six months in to see the faith that has been planted, the nest that has been built, but the best is yet to come. Now here's what I've found. I've found that uh, most of us get a little impatient. Have you found that in your relationship with the Lord, the hardest thing to trust is God's timing? And it's usually not because God does something too quickly. Lord, that was too quick. <laughs> it's usually like, Lord, is this ever, ever going to happen? Um, do you know, one of the joys of my life is writing. I felt called to write when I was 22. I didn't write a book until I was 35. Do you know how frustrated I got? Because it was the deferred dream. But, but God knew, because... If I had written a book at 22, I would have had to write one at 23 to retract what I said at 22. <laughs> but you trust God's timing. And it's probably going to take longer than you think. And it's going to be harder than you would imagine. But God is going to do something bigger and better than you can believe. A few years ago, wrote a book called The Circle Maker. And there's this wonderful story in the Talmud, which is the Jewish commentary on the Old Testament, about a man named Honi, the circle maker. And uh, is Israel was having a drought. He prays this, this bold prayer. Uh, Sovereign Lord, I swear before your great name that I will not leave this circle until you have mercy upon your children. He had drawn a circle in the sand and he had literally kneeled in that circle and said, God, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay right here. Um, now, this isn't a message about that, but I will tell you, God honors bold prayers because I think bold prayers honor God. But there's a second story in the Talmud that shared about Honey, and I, I, I like it, maybe not quite as much, but it's good. He had an encounter with someone who had planted a carob tree, and he questioned this man. Since a carob tree does not bear fruit for 70 years, are you certain of living so long as to eat of it? Think about that. You're planting a tree 70 years in a day and age when the lifespan, that would be about twice the average lifespan. The man said, I found the world provided with carob trees. As my forefathers planted them for me, I likewise plant them for my descendants. You don't plant carob trees for yourself. You don't plant churches for yourself. You plant them for what God might do over the next 70 years. You know, it, Pastor Steve, it's so funny how long it takes me to learn some of the simplest little mess, uh, uh, some of the simplest little um, truths or things that God is uh, trying to teach me. And, and here's one of them, 23 years in. I finally figured this out. Guess what? God's vision for his church is bigger than ours. <gasps> Amazing. Um, you know, I, I uh, 23 years ago, did a little 4.7 mile prayer walk around Capitol Hill. Now understand this, I, I was not praying for property. I never thought we would own a thing, not, not, not in the shadow of the capital. Like there's no land left and stuff's pretty expensive. I was praying for people, just praying that God's kingdom would come, God's will would be done. And I, I want to be careful here because sometimes you time lapse a story 23 years and it sounds like it happened like that. Nothing happened for a long, long time. We now own seven properties on that prayer circle. Is that coincidence? I think not. I think we may be the largest landholder behind the federal government on Capitol Hill. It's ridiculous. Um, and, and I think it's because 
God's vision for his church is bigger than ours. In six weeks, we'll move into phase one of a city block. A city block did not have a category for a city block or a $29.3 million building. Are you kidding? But I believe God wants us to be a bigger blessing to our city. And because of that, he's going to do some things that are way beyond our two millimeters of faith. You know where, where I feel like I'm at right now? Um, right between so far, so God. And the best is yet to come. I love what God's done at New City. And I'll tell you this, we're going to overestimate what God can do in a year or two. But we're going to underestimate what God can do in 10 or 20 years. And to be able to be here, I was just in San Francisco and I met someone who said that someone gave them some Uber stock when it was 60 cents. Don't you wish you'd gotten in on some of these IPOs? New City Church, we're, we're getting in at 60 cents. Right? And, and we get to, yeah. In fact, give it up for yourselves right now. I, you are investing time and talent and treasure, but I'm going to tell you, God's going to do something so much bigger than what we could ask or imagine. Why? Because he's able to do that. Let me bring this in for a closing. And, and uh, thanks for giving me the liberty to maybe take a few extra minutes today. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm so full of joy this morning. I, I can't even put it into words. Um, God's faithfulness. It's an amazing thing. And if you're questioning that today, I just want to speak into your life. That if you're in one of those tough seasons, this too shall pass. God's going to bring you through this. He doesn't always deliver us from. He can. He does. But he will deliver us through. And I'm just believing with you that those seeds of faith that you've planted that have not broken through the surface. Stay patient. Stay humble. Stay hungry. And let's see what God can do. And so, a few years ago, uh, and I'll close with this. I, I got an email from someone who had uh, read In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day, a book with a really long title that I wrote a long time ago. And one of the things I pray for the books I write is that, God, would you put them in the right hands at the right time? And so for me, a book sold is not a book sold. It's a prayer answered. And so many fun testimonies of God just using something at the right time in the right way. And so this guy named Peter sends me an email and said, hey, I was reading in a pit. And I was on a flight, which is a great place to read. When you're at 30,000 feet, stuff reads better. That or the beach. I would highly recommend reading in those two places. And... Uh, he said, I was reading your book and just really challenged that maybe I had become a little reactive and I needed to become more proactive and look for those God-ordained opportunities around me. He said, sure enough, I, I get on a flight and I'm seated next to a girl, a uh, teenage girl, and just felt like the Lord was impressing upon me that, that something was happening in her life and and that I needed to reach out to her. Now, you know the drill on the plane. Um, and so he turns, introduces himself, and she's like, do not, you know, internally, like, do not. It's obvious, like, and the armrest is mine. Like, leave me alone. There's an invisible wall right here. And uh, doesn't want anything to do with it. But he can't shake it. So he turns to her one more time and just says, listen, I, I, I don't want to, get in your business, but I just feel like you might be carrying a burden. And I'd love to hear your story and pray for you. Well, the 17-year-old girl, somehow it disarms her and he explains that, she explains to him that uh, she was pregnant uh, three months and 
that her boyfriend had told her to take off, take care of it. And so she had stolen her dad's credit card that morning, bought a one-way ticket to Vegas. And um, it seems to me like these are the stories that aren't going to end well. And by the end of that flight, he talks her into, you know, I, I bet your parents would love to know where you're at. And so they land. She calls her parents, uh, ends up getting right back on the next plane, back to her home. And, and I, I, I don't know, again, past my pay grade to figure out all of that, but it sure seems to me like God intervened in a way that... Uh, was pretty critical. And so Peter shares that story, says that's what happened after reading chapter one, looking forward to chapter two. <laughs> but said this, and this is where I just want to make this as earthy and as real to us as we can. This is not above any one of us. Here's what he said. Please know. I take no credit. I was scared to even open up the conversation for fear that I would offend this young girl. It was all God. He said this. It's not my job to save people. It's my responsibility, here it is, to plant a seed. Isn't that beautiful? This is not complicated. Uh, as I like to say, this is not rocket surgery. You'll get that in a minute. <laughs> to share what God has done with me personally, and then it's up to the Holy Spirit to work on people's hearts, to nurture the seed into a fruit-bearing plant so His glory is revealed. All right, let's just kind of bring this thing back to where each of us are. I, I, I believe that God does wonderful things when we exercise faith. Do not let fear dictate your decisions. There are people around you uh, this coming week that it's not just an appointment, it's a divine appointment. That God is working in strange and mysterious ways. And if we just had the courage to take that two millimeters of faith, plant it here, and plant it there, and just plant one over here and plant it over there and plant it over there. Guess what? God is going to do something so much bigger in each one of our lives. Bigger than any of us could imagine. And what's going to happen? It's going to create this domino effect. And before you know it, this two inch domino is going to become something that is so much bigger than we could ask or imagine. Do you have two millimeters of faith today? Do you have that? You don't need nine feet of faith. You just have two millimeters of faith. Um, can I invite you to stand right now? I want to pray for you. Just ask God to give us that measure of faith to believe that in us personally and through us as New City Church, that God's going to do some things that we cannot take credit for. And so, Lord, right now, I thank you for everybody in this place, here by divine appointment. Lord, for those who maybe today need to make a first step of faith, God, we celebrate with that step. This is a church that wants to help them take that next step and grow in a relationship with Christ God, for those who maybe have become complacent in their faith, maybe become reactive instead of proactive, God, would you just do something? Would you shift something in our spirits today to simply recognize the way that the Spirit of God is moving? In fact, let me just say this. Some of us, what we want is God to bless what we want to do, but I think we need to do what God is blessing and so we need to look around us. God, would you give us eyes to see? Would you give us a spirit that's sensitive to the moving of your Holy Spirit? And would we obey those promptings so that we could see your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Hey, can we do this? Can we praise God, the God who turns two millimeters of faith into nine-foot trees? Can we praise him for that this morning? God bless you. Thanks so much.